Blood, sweat, and respect. The first two you give, the last one you earn. Let's get out and earn it. Daily. Do you know how many people tweet, hustle, and work six hours a day? They say that nothing good happens in the 4 a.m. hour. Well, I can guarantee you this, it's 4.45 a.m., it's still dark outside. Look at that, the lights just went out, and I'm getting ready to kill this AM cardio. You can't even see me, but it's gonna be so good, it's bad. If you ever say to somebody else, why are you up so early, that is the quickest tell to you are not a winning player. I don't care if you're a born entrepreneur. I don't care if you've been to jail. I don't care if you dropped out of high school. What do you want to become? And what price are you willing to pay to get there? What now? Well, I'm always trying to outdo myself. So I pose the question for everyone else. What now with you? I know what I'm doing. I know the direction I'm going in, but I love to inspire and to motivate. So that question should be a question that everybody gets after school, after work, after any and everything you do, what now? Have you ever struggled to be more disciplined? You know you got that paper due next week, but you don't do anything all week, even though you know it's coming. Or you set up a brand new habit that you're so excited about that you know can improve your life, your relationships, or your work, but you don't stick to it. Or you started that workout routine, and you got really pumped up, fired up into it. You, you lost a couple pounds, but then you know three weeks later, it was gone. And what did you blame? You blamed your discipline. I teach people that daily you have to prime yourself. You have to do something for 10 minutes minimum. If you don't have 10 minutes, you don't have a life. Every day, selling myself, selling myself. I'm gonna write a New York Times best-selling book, okay? I'm gonna speak to tens of thousands of people. I'm gonna help millions of people on planet Earth. I'm, I'm literally reminding myself every day. When I wake up in the morning, I write my goals down. When I go to bed at night, I write my goals down. It's the first thing and the last thing I do every day. I've been doing that for 25 years. If you don't do that, if you get up and you just have no discipline whatsoever, you get no value of anything. Your diets don't work when you don't do them. Exercise doesn't work when you don't do them. But most of the people have some experiences that they want to shift. And once you shift those things, your whole life changes. But life is constant growth. My life isn't here because I went to one seminar one time and now my life is fit for life. I, I work out, I train my mind, I train my body. It becomes a lifestyle. Discipline is one of the most important things we can develop in our lives because without that ability to be sort of self-reliant and willful to get things done on a continual basis, we never get that great amount of momentum and progress towards what we really want. First time I wake up in the morning, I prime myself. That's what I've done for years. It's like I change my body with this radical breathing pattern or movement, but then I do it through 10 minutes, three and a half minutes of pure gratitude about three things. And the reason for gratitude is the two emotions that mess us up the most are fear and anger. And you can't be grateful and fearful simultaneously. They don't go together. And then I do three minutes of my three to thrive. What are three outcomes or results I'm really committed to and I see them as done and fulfilled? The first idea is to emotionally engage with that dream each morning of your life. See, a lot of people don't actually struggle with the discipline part in terms of the doing the thing. It's that they're not getting revved up to do the thing. In other words, we got a problem with motivation, not necessarily just discipline. Where does motivation stop and start? Everybody's got a different answer, but here's what I can tell you. It's really easy to be motivated. Either you've got it or you can watch it. It's really hard to execute. It is the variable that separates people. People are always gonna tell me, every day, every day I roll up on people, they're like, yo, I'm gonna buy the Seahawks and you're gonna buy the Jets. And I'm like, great, can't wait to see you. People are always telling me that they're gonna do this and that and this and that. And you know what I do? I ask lots of them to email me in 60 days, in 90 days, in a year. And you know how many do? Goose egg. People talk shit. And I don't know where it stops or starts, but I know that most of you, 99% of you, aren't gonna do anything about it, and that sucks. We have a problem with that once in a while, you, you hit it, you do it, you do the work. But a lot of times you fall off because you're not emotionally engaged in it. It's like, if you want a lot of discipline, you need a high level of emotional connection and focus on that thing that you wanna to work towards. So every morning, what I want you to do is just start a new visualization practice. When you wake up in the morning, close your eyes, think about the dream, the aspiration, the thing that you're really after in life. 
and just visualize it and really get yourself emotionally attached, emotionally engaged with it. Think about how great it will feel for you to have that thing or be that thing or contribute that thing to make that difference. Just think about it and allow it to well up in your heart a little bit, get excited about it. Remember the dream. That's why we get away from discipline because we're so busy with the chaos of the world that we emotionally are no longer attached in a way that our brain says, hey man, focus on this. It's important to remember. I think the people that have made those mistakes and that have went through those crazy changes are people that have put themselves in a position to not grow. So why go backwards? You're supposed to progress, you're not supposed to digress. The reason a lot of people don't have discipline in their life is they're letting their day be ruled by randomness. They don't have blocks of time that have actually been scheduled to do the thing they're supposed to do. So they're counting on sudden will. Oh, you know, I'll get to that today, or I'll get to that someday. And of course, someday turns into never, and then they start blaming their discipline. It's not their discipline, it's the lack of a calendar that says, do this now. So schedule what you must make happen, and you'll suddenly find yourself, wow, I'm, I'm so disciplined. You, you need to have scheduled blocks of time where that discipline happens every day, and that's the only thing that happens. Look, you can always do something every day towards your dreams. And if you believe that, it could be just some, something small. It could be doing a little bit of research, journaling, taking that action, creating that presentation, making that call, whatever it is for you, you can do something every day. As Ralph Waldo Emerson said, do not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. It's never going to make sense. It's never going to be obvious. You're never going to walk out your door and see the obvious way that you want to go. And if you do, it's a trap. If you do go down the path that's already laid for you, it's going to take you to all the destinations that are already known. It's going to take you to all of the places that instinct drove the people before you. But if you want to go somewhere unique, if you want to go somewhere that only you would go, if you want to create something new and really live a life that was meant for you because it's literally crafted by you, you have to take the first steps on faith. And as Rumi said, as you start to walk out on the way, the way appears. So as you're looking at the choices that are before you, where you've got a path that's well trodden, you've got a path that literally is invisible and won't become something until you step on it, you have to understand that that's what this life is meant to be and that the only frustration that you will look back on with tremendous regret is knowing that you did what was easy even though it wasn't you. There's some mechanism inside of us. There's something that wants us to walk a path that's never been walked before. And the thing that makes it so hard is right now inside of you is a desperate desire for that to be easy. But it's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard. You're going to fail. You're going to stumble. You're going to fall on your face. And thank God. Because as Muhammad Ali said, only a man who knows what it's like to be defeated can reach down to the bottom of his soul and come up with the extra ounce of power it takes to win when the match is even. So what you have to ask yourself is, what do you want? Do you want it to be easy? Do you want the path to be well-worn? Or do you want the path to be yours? Do you want to know that inside of you is something that you can reach into and grab and that will be there at the moment that you most need it? Do you want to know that you're that type of person? Because if you do, you have to be willing to walk the path that doesn't exist. You have to be willing to tread through the brambles. You have to be willing to fall because it is in that process of failure and pain and agony and suffering that you will become. That's the process that will make you you. That's the process that will shape you. It's the suffering that gives you the reserves to draw on when you need them most. So when you ask for safety, when you ask for ease, know that you're saying a prayer for weakness. And when you take the hard way, know that you're forging yourself. When you make those demands, know that you're building a reserve tank that will be there at the moment when you need it. 
when you walk the path that only you can walk, know that you're living the life that you were meant to live. And that, my friends, is how you become the you worth becoming.